the last series of questions we go through here um, can focus on your accept, connect, embody model that you've developed um, with your team, as far as I understand. And um, maybe as you're explaining it, uh, you'll likely there's lots of content that we've already talked about that you could back reference, but maybe couch it in also a description of why it is that that in particular seems to be positive for resolving mm. or healing depression, which might yeah. might ask you to explain a little bit about where depression comes from as well. Mm -hmm. So the accept, connect, and body model um, is a framework for, it's a metaphor essentially for understanding or a framework for viewing the psilocybin experience. Well, actually, no, it's a framework for emotional voyaging for the purposes of finding meaning. So it doesn't have to be used with, with psychedelics. It, you can do it without. Um, and the, the, the model is really, it, it's built around a diagram. And the diagram is a is an oval shape. And the bottom half of the oval is blue. And the top half is pink. And the bottom half says accept on it. And the top half says connect. And the, the, the dividing line between the blue and the pink is, is seen as the, the surface of the sea. So the blue is the sea and the pink is the sky. And this diagram is the basis of a visualization exercise where you take people in stages. So there's six stages. And the first stage is at that dividing line between the blue and the pink halves. And that's the level of the waves, the surface, that day-to-day chit-chat of the ego mind. And at that stage, the instruction is let go. So let go of the ego mind, let go of concerns and just drop down into your body. The second stage is going down into the water and that's the body. And that's about feeling different sensations in your body, doing a body scan, getting awareness of where there might be tightnesses or like sense of aches or funny feelings. And that helps people get into their emotions. The third stage is at the very bottom of the sea when they've got dive down, they dive down to the bottom and they're looking around and they, they find these piles of oyster shells and these oyster shells represent painful feelings. And so they go into those oyster, oyster shells, they go into those feelings and they are encouraged to open up, them up, go through them and search around in the gunky innards. So there's this idea that in our painful experiences, there's this kind of hard shell of don't don't go here maybe anger rage um sometimes just kind of sadness about it but that underneath those la those layers there can be very tender vulnerable feelings of being exposed of shame of feeling very um unsafe so they go through that layer of the hard shell and the spikes and then through the gunk and the slime and they're encouraged to search for the meaning of that experience and they look for a pearl and the pearl is the meaning because of what they've learned through going through these difficult, the, going through the oyster shell. And then when they find a pearl, the next instruction is to swim up. So this is about swimming up through the water and it's bursting through the surface of the sea. And this is a sun. So the next stage is the sun and the sun is the self, the, the self with the big S, not the little S, it's the mm -hmm. big self. And this is the self of you've been, you've been in all these emotions, then you burst through the surface and you're, you're able to see everything. You, you have this perspective. You've felt this. You've learned this lesson, and then you're you're connected to yourself in a deeper way because of what you've been through, and you have a new perspective on everything. So you you connect to yourself, and then the next stage is to look in your hand, and you see this pearl. And this is about values. This is about meaning of what that teaches you, the lesson. And then the final stage is about setting intentions for how you will actually turn this value or this lesson into actual behavioral change mm. so this is about the, the bigger vista this is like the whole like how this is going to fit into your whole life and this is about what you were saying about the kind of it's very much top down bottom bottom up because of the, of the model the pink and the blue the blue half is very much the bottom up feeling of emotions and the top half is the kind of top down behavioral change aspect another way of saying it is the bottom the blue bit is all about pain and the pink bit is more about kind of meaning or joy um, and connection. So it's difficult to explain without the diagram, but 
the, the diagram is based, those six principles map onto the six aspects of psychological flexibility as described by the, um, something called the hexaflex. And the hexaflex is a model of psychological flexibility that's been described in a type of therapy called acceptance and commitment therapy. Um, and these six processes map onto those six processes in the diagram. So essentially what you have is you have a model of psychological flexibility. Each one of those stages, the letting go, the being aware of your body in the moment, the acceptance of emotions, the connecting to your larger observer self, connecting to your values and connecting to how to actually like act upon those values. Those six stages are the six processes of psychological flexibility. So it's transposing that psychological flexibility model onto the different stages of a psychedelic adventure. Mm. And so essentially what the model is trying to do is trying to support it in psychological flexibility. It's helping people stay open after the experience as well, because it's helping people have a model for how they can in their, the days and weeks and months and years after the psychedelic experience continue to to do this, to continue um, diving into their emotions, feeling them and connecting to meaning and values all the time. So a simplified version of the diagram is just one that just says it's like a circle with a pink half and a blue half. And it just says accept and connect. And I have I mean, I, I use that all the time, the very simple models for myself, just because in pretty much any given situation, you can think about what, what do I do here? And you think, well, accept the difficulty and connect to the meaning. And it kind of it's a very simple formulation, but it's, it's quite effective. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Um, so the way we use it in the study is um, that journey is, is the basis of two visualization exercises. The first is a preparation one. So people go on the dive and they go into the oasis of how they're feeling and then they connect to the pearls and that that helps them form an intention for the next day. And the other version of it is slightly different, and that's for integrating the experience. So they, they do that the day after. And we make an audio recording of that for them to take home so that they can keep doing the visualization at home. Mm -hmm. um, and all these materials, the visualizations, the diagram will all be, it's going to be published, so that will just be available to anyone that wants to use it. Um, and I guess, yeah, thinking about why it might be helpful for people with depression. Um, so... There is, from, from the work done by proponents of acceptance and commitment therapy, so Steve Hayes is the originator of this type of therapy. And there are loads of parallels, by the way, between acceptance and commitment therapy and psychedelic work. They, the models fit together very, very naturally. Mm. I've heard that from several people, actually. Yeah. 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 Um, and there's going to be a special issue in the Journal of Contextual Behavioral Science soon, a, a special psychedelic issue. So I expect this synergy will be um, become more and more celebrated soon. Um, there's a lot we can look, both, both sides can learn a lot from the other side in this way. Like ACT can learn a lot from psychedelics, psychedelics can learn a lot from ACT, I think. Um, so what was I saying? Depression. There's maybe a special issue. Yes, so with depression, so the work of people like Steve Hayes focuses a lot on this thing called experiential avoidance. So experiential avoidance is essentially avoiding your difficult feelings, not consciously, but it's just a, a natural process that happens. Um, and in a way it ties in with what we were talking about before about not having a psychedelic experience, because it may be that it's the extreme of experiential avoidance mm. kicking it. And, and it's not a conscious thing that people don't choose to avoid their experiences, but it happens. So for example, rumination is something very commonly reported by people with depression. And rumination is basically the mind going over and over and over and over something, kind of trying to solve it, but just going over it. And when people are ruminating, they're so in their heads, they're totally disconnected from their feelings. So something bad might happen. You have an embarrassing thing that happened at a party. You felt shame. And what happens is that you go away and you ruminate, ruminate, ruminate for hours. You're stuck in your head going over and over and over and over. And you're not fully engaging with the complex um, package of emotions that go with that. Whereas if you were to really stay with your feelings, to drop into your body, you might experience shame and then rage, and then desolation. You know, you might go through those things and afterwards feel much better because you'd work through it. But by ruminating, you never really get there. So that's one kind of experiential avoidance. You're avoiding the emotional experience. <clears throat> Another type is distracting yourself or numbing out, you know, consciously. 
So experiential avoidance seems to be this transdiagnostic phenomenon that is linked to lots of different mental health problems. But the way it manifests, the way it seems to manifest in depression is, is often this kind of rumination. So, so although people think depression is all about being sad, it's often about, it's actually often about being numb. Mm. People often report very flattened emotional repertoires rather than um, it's they're, they're stuck in a very flat way of being. So, so that idea of going diving down into those emotions is undoing experiential avoidance. It's giving people an opportunity to do something different and to really accept those experiences. It's the opposite of experiential avoidance. It's this acceptance. And this this whole model is based around the qualitative research that I did on the first study, which found that there were these two very prominent themes um, that people describe when they talked about what psilocybin had done for them. They described that depression was disconnection and that psilocybin helped them connect to themselves, others in the world around them. And that depression was also about avoidance of emotion. So, um, uh, experiential avoidance in other words, Mm -hmm. and that psilocybin helped them accept. So it's disconnection to connection, avoidance to acceptance. And so that's what, so these two processes of accept and connect came from the participants. It was what they said happened. So the way the model was developed was me taking the two concepts of acceptance and connection as the mechanisms of psilocybin innately and turning them into something a bit richer and more a bit more usable and to give people tools to help them with that process. So Hmm. I don't know, does that kind of describe it? Yes, actually, but there are there are two things that came up there, Um, one of which uh, and I feel like. We're we're at like almost two hours, and I feel my like my cognitive fatigue coming on because we've been deep for two hours. And even the listeners might be like, listen, listeners get to take a pause and come back to this later. Yeah, we're, sure. we're almost we're almost through. Um, Just having some coffee. <laughs> please, please. Uh, <laughs> so the the first thing is that I I think I understand, but I didn't hear you explain where the embody comes in. Because you talked a oh, lot yeah. about the acceptment and the commitment, yeah. or sorry, acceptance yeah. uh, and the uh, connection. How about embody? Yes. So, um, so the embodiment aspect runs through the whole thing. The embodiment is the way that those those mechanisms unfold. Acceptance is is an embodied process of feeling the emotions in your body. So when you go to those oyster shells and you dig around, you feel it in your body. So whenever people, we do this with people, we're, we're operating on two different levels. There's the kind of visual metaphor level of this water and the oysters and that. But then there's the body level. And, and what's happening is they go through each stage, their body is changing. And um, the first stage is about diving down from the mind into the body. The second stage is this body scan of, of growing awareness of how the body is feeling. And the third stage is going to the emotions. And it's very much felt in the body. So we encourage that through just questions like where do you feel it in your body so in the preparation you know where do you feel it in your body and then in the session itself people will often report rather than saying I'm feeling very sad or I'm feeling very happy they will say I've got a tight feeling in my chest Mm, be careful with hitting your mic oh oh. yeah (laughs) like a tight feeling in my chest or a funny feeling in my stomach or something like that and that's the way in so it comes through the body and then the connection um perhaps Perhaps less so there. I mean, that can be um, maybe perhaps sometimes more happening on a kind of cognitive level, this idea of connecting to meaning and values. But I think really the the embodiment aspect is really, it, it, it envelops the whole thing. And I guess it's so relevant as well because we're understanding more and more about things like polyvagal theory and more about the way our whole system can respond or not respond to, to psychedelics and yeah. how working with the body is such a good way to help the experience flow often for people if they feel a bit stuck. So it feels like accept, connect and embody are the three things we need to do. They're the three things we need to help people. They're the three reminders that we can give people to, to get the most of out of the psilocybin experience. It's the three things we can remind people to do in their waking life to help them engage with life um and and it's also they're the kind of opposites of the things that 
um, are linked to depression so often. So if I think about depression, it's, yeah, experiential avoidance rather than acceptance. It's about being disconnected from values and meaning and other people and yourself and the world. Mm -hmm. And it's often about a disembodiment of being living in your head. Our culture is very, very much focused on the head. And we don't have a language for the body and how the body works. And we, we're getting better at it, I think. Like if you look at how yoga has become so much more popular now, but we we're not a very embo embodied culture so the acceptance connection and embodiment are at the simplest level of the body it's like a reminder of three things that you can do in any moment to help you engage with life it's not three things that will take away your sadness mm -hmm. or take away your pain or make you feel better it's about how to engage with it and and live um depression is in a way the i guess the evolutionary purpose of depression is when um you know uh like the the person or the animal or is is feeling not to their best is they're feeling depleted they it's like taking them to the back of the cave so that they're not engaging in interactions so depression uh, the evolutionary purpose of having depression is like saying okay so you're not firing in all cylinders so self-isolate go go into a dark place and, and stay away so that you're not engaging with the world and that does make sense that there should that there are times when it's better for us to take time and stay quiet and take stock and heal and get stronger but with depression it's when that state stays for a long time mm -hmm. and in that state it can feel for people like they are just trapped in that cave they're trapped in that dark place um and so the opposite of depression isn't happiness. It's kind of engage, it's being able to engage with the world again. And so in a way, a psychedelic experience is, is, is often people are kind of coming into it from a place of being in a very trapped place and, and often living quite restricted lives into this rich engagement with things that they haven't experienced before um and so i suppose what we're doing with our framework is we're we're encouraging people to do the incredibly courageous act of even though they feel bad and even though it feels totally impossible and overwhelming to come out of that dark place and engage with things and even though everything's stacked up against them doing it is to encourage them that they can because these processes can help them. The acceptance, the connection, the embodiment, like welcoming the pain and going through it, choosing to do it with the support mm -hmm. that they acquire. With a kind of, if you see it as, um, no matter how painful it is, it's like, it's important. You know, it's important and it's and they're not alone in doing it. So I guess that that's the model. It's a kind of map for helping people engage with all the difficulty and bad things that can happen in life um, by accepting, connecting and embodying. Hmm.